Okay, um, so these first types of problems are going to be on graphing, and you're going to graph this on Photomath. Um, so to do these, you're given two equations here, and basically we're trying to see where these equations cross each other. And they're both in the form of y equals mx plus b. Okay, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. Okay, again, if you're just coming in, please write your name in the chat so that you can get attendance for today. But, so if we graph these, I'm gonna look at this one right here first. <clears throat> I'm just gonna write it down here. So we have y equals negative 2 sevenths x plus five. Well, that means that this has a slope of negative 2 sevenths. So that means I'm gonna go down two and then to the right seven. I always go to the right. So the negative will tell you to go up or down and then I just always go to the right. <clears throat> okay, and then the five is the y-intercept. <clears throat> So to graph this one, I'm gonna go up five, so there's that point right there. And then I'm going to go, so the slope is negative two sevenths, which means I'm gonna go down two and over seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> and then there's two points you can graph of these two points, like photo math, or not photo math, don't use photo math. <laughs> um, my open math will just do it for you. Or we could also go, so since we went down two to the right seven, we could do the opposite and go up two and then to the left seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> and then there is our first line right there. Okay. Any questions with that? Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with this other line. So y equals negative two x minus seven. So then this one has a slope of negative two, which you could always just put that over one. So that means you're gonna go down two over one or over to the right one. And then minus seven, this means um, your y-intercept is negative seven. So for this line, I'm just going to go down to negative 7. There's my first point. And then the slope here is negative 2, so I go down 2 over 1. And then I'm going to do the same thing but the other way. So opposite of down 2 over 1 would be up 2 to the left one, then up 2 to the left one. And I'm just going to keep doing this, especially because I'm doing this by hand, so it makes it a little bit easier. So there is that line. And we're trying to see what the solution is here. Well, the solution is where they cross. So it's that point right there, which is going to be negative 7, 7. Okay. Is there any questions with that one? I think there's like three or four where you have to actually graph the lines. <clears throat> Are we okay with that one? <clears throat> okay, one more time. If you haven't written your name in the chat to get attendance, please write your name in the chat so you can get attendance. <clears throat> okay, let's do another one. So let's look at this one. Negative X plus Y equals negative two. And then four X minus three Y equals nine and we went through if you watched the video last night which you should have um there were three different methods here and this method i want to use the substitution method here <clears throat> so that means we're going to solve this for one of the variables and then we're going to substitute it into the other equation <clears throat> so here i'm going to take this top equation and i'm going to solve it for y 
And I'm going to solve it for y because y is the positive. It's positive and there's no other, like there's not a number with it. So that's a pretty easy variable to solve for. So if we have negative x plus y equals negative 2, well, then I can just add this x over and I get y equals x minus 2. <clears throat> Okay, and then I'm going to take this. So once you have it solved for one of the variables, you can take that and you can plug it into the other equation for wherever that variable was. So I'm going to plug it in for y on that other equation. So this is going to be 4x minus 3 times x minus 2 equals 9. <clears throat> And then this is an equation that we should all be able to solve. So I'm going to distribute that 3 in, and I get 4x minus 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, and that equals 9. 4x minus 3x, well, that just leaves us with an x. Plus 6 equals 9. Subtract that 6, and you get x equals 3. Okay, <clears throat> once you solve for one of these, now we can plug it into any of these top equations. It can go into this equation, this equation, or even that equation that we solved for. And I'm going to plug it into the equation that we solved for right there because it's already solved for y. Okay, but any of the equations will give you the right answer. So then this is going to be y equals 3 minus 2, which means y equals 1. So if we were to graph these two lines, they would cross at the point 3, 1. They'd cross right here. I don't know what exactly these lines look like, but they would oops, look like something like that. Okay, so our solution here, always write it as an ordered pair. So this is going to be 3, 1. <clears throat> Okay, any questions with that? <coughs> you guys should have done this before, so hopefully this feels like a little bit of a review. Um, all right, let's go to this next one then. So this time I'm going to do this one using elimination, which elimination is super important. Once we get to what we're doing next time, three variable equations, then you have to use elimination on three variable equations. So I would try to use elimination as often as possible. Substitution works also, but um, when we get to what we're doing, we have to use elimination. So we have to decide which variable to eliminate, either our x's or our y's. I'm just going to choose to eliminate the y's. It doesn't matter which one you do, but I'm going to eliminate the y's here. Now, this is negative 2y, and this is positive 4y. And I need those to be the same number but opposite signs. So to do that, I'm going to multiply this top equation by positive 2. Because if we do that, I'm going to get negative 2 times 2, and that will be a negative 4. So if we multiply that, the 2 multiplies to everything. So I'm left with 8x minus 4y equals negative 20. And then I'm just going to rewrite this equation down here. So x plus 4y equals 11. And then we can just add these two equations together. And you should notice here that negative 4y plus 4y, those just cancel each other out. And then we're left with 8x plus 8 or plus x, that's 9x. Negative 20 plus 11 is negative 9. And then I can just divide that by 9, and you get x equals negative 1. <clears throat> Once we've solved for one of those, now I can take this and plug it into one of those equations. Doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to use the top one. So that's going to be 4 times negative 1, because wherever the x is gets replaced with negative 1. Minus 2y equals negative 10. So 4 times negative 1, that's negative 4. Minus 2y equals negative 10. 
add that 4 over so you get negative 2y equals negative 6 <clears throat> divide by negative 2 so y equals 3 and you would have gotten the same thing if you plugged it into this bottom equation here so then our answer here is negative 1, 3. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Any questions with that? Okay. All right, these are the next ones. So the end of your homework is all word problems. So the, I, d I decided to do two of them. You might have different numbers than I have. But let's look at this first one. So a man has 38 coins in his pocket. And I'm just going to highlight things that I think are important. So he has 38 coins, um, all of which are dimes and quarters. So he only has dimes and quarters. Um, the total value of the change is 680 cents. And we want to know how many dimes and how many quarters does he have. So we need to set up equations here. <clears throat> Well, the first thing, so they're doing this in cents, which makes this actually a little bit easier. We're not dealing with decimals. So let's first, we know that it's dimes and it's quarters, right? So that means that dimes, let's just say that dimes, let's give it the variable of D. And let's give quarters the variable of Q. Okay, so we have dimes and we have quarters. And then we know that dimes <clears throat> are each 10 cents. And we know that quarters are 25 cents. So now we need to set up some sort of equation here. So first we know that it tells us that he has 38 coins in his pocket. So if he has 38 coins, we can do the dimes plus the quarters must equal 38. So however many dimes he has, however many quarters he has, he has 38 when we add those all together. And then to write, we have two equations here. We're doing systems, right? Um, we know that the total value is 680 cents. So this is going to equal 680. But now we need to figure out this 10 cents and this um, 25 cents is going to play into here somehow. So... 10 cents goes with the dime, so that's going to be 10D, so 10 for each dime, 10 cents for each dime, plus 25 cents for each quarter, and that will equal 680. Is there any questions with how I set those equations up? I feel like setting the equations up is probably the hardest part of these. <clears throat> We're okay with that. Now, you can solve this with substitution. You can solve it with elimination. Um, either one, it be that bad. Honestly, I'm just going to do it with elimination. And I am going to multiply this top equation. I'm going to eliminate my Ds. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 10. Since this is technically a 1, we can think of these as 1s here if we want to. Well, 1 times negative 10 will give me a negative 10 right here, which is what I want to eliminate that. So if we multiply that into all of this, we have negative 10 times 1d, which is negative 10d. Negative 10 times 1q is negative 10q. And then 38 times negative 10 is negative 380. And then we can just add these two equations together. The dimes are going to cancel out, so these are gone. 25q minus 10q is 15q. Um, 680 minus 380 is 300. Then we divide that by 15. 300 divided by 15 is 20. So that means that we have 20 quarters. <clears throat> okay. 
And then we can easily solve for the dimes. I'm just going to plug it into this top equation. So I have D plus 20 equals 38. So then I can just subtract that 20. So the dimes equals 18. So we have 18 dimes and 20 quarters, which all totals to be 680 cents, which is $6.80. <coughs> Any questions with that? Okay, let's do one more. And then that's all I have for you after we do this one. Um, so this one, this is another one of the word problems that you'll see. So the admission fee at an amusement park is $150 for children and $4 for adults. Um, on a certain day, 339 people entered the park. Um, and the total emissions collected was $946. And we want to know how many children and how many adults came into the amusement park that day. So again, we need to set up some sort of equation. So for the children, let's just say C equals the children. And I'm going to use a capital A because sometimes my A's look like nines or sixes. They look weird. But um, let's say A equals adults. Okay, we know that it was 150 for each child to get into the amusement park, which is super cheap <laughs> considering how much it is to get into like Lagoon. But then it'd be $4 for the adults to get into this amusement park. Okay, and again, we need to set up some sort of equation. So we are told that 339 people entered the park that day. So that's going to be children plus adults equals 339. And then for the admissions collected, well, it's 150 per child and it's $4 per adult. So this is going to be 150. We don't need to write that. Um, 150 per child plus $4 per adult, and that equals 946. Any questions with how we set up those equations? The equations are the hardest part of these problems, I think. <clears throat> or okay. <coughs> All right, so here, I am going to, I'm going to use elimination again just so that we can kind of get used to it. And I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 4. I don't want to multiply by a decimal. I just don't want to deal with decimals. But So that's why I'm going to multiply by negative 4, and I'm going to get rid of the a's. So I'm going to eliminate the a's. Okay, so when we multiply that, you get negative 4c minus 4a equals 339 times 4 is negative 1,596. And now those A's will cancel out. Um, 150 minus 4 is negative 250, or 2.5C equals 946 minus 1596 is a negative 650. Okay. And now here, I'm just going to divide by that negative 2.5. So we end up getting C equals, when you divide that, you get 260. So that means 260 children entered the amusement park that day. And we can solve for the adults pretty easy. I'm just going to plug it into this equation. So we have 260 plus A equals 339. Subtract that 260. And you get A equals 139. <clears throat> Okay, any questions with any of that?
Okay, well, if you, there's no questions, that's all I had. Um, make sure if you haven't already, write your name in the chat or else you're not gonna get attendance for today. Um, so please just write your name in the chat if you haven't yet. And that's it. Um, ideally, you guys could work on the homework right now. And then I'm just gonna stay on all morning. So if you do have questions as you're going through the homework, you're welcome to just pop on. It will be on this. Um, the only thing at like 925, that's when you need to hop onto your second period class. And that's when like my second period will hop on. Okay. So you're welcome to hop off now. Please just get going on that homework and write your name in the chat. Okay. <clears throat> have a good day. Hey, Gagan, I wasn't here to take um, the